Well hello once again everyone, it's been a very long time since I've made a video but seeing as I've gone through the magic 1000 subscribers I thought it was time to produce some more videos because I know people do like electronics things. The first one I thought I'd show you is this, if you've got one of these multifunction testers, a component tester you may find after a little while's use that when you press the button like this one, nothing happens, it's dead, dead as a dodo and of course you can't fix it and what many people do now is they just send them back to Amazon or wherever they bought it from and try and get a refund. There is though a way of fixing it and I will show you. It takes about five minutes. I fixed this one once before, so I'm going to fix it again. Hopefully, show you. One screwdriver. Remove the four screws that hold the back on. And I'll show you why this goes wrong. Basically, it has got no main on and off switch. And what you've got inside here will come apart, which of course it won't. Four screws. So it should come apart. Oh, my spudger. Right, what you've got in inside here is a small computer and a battery. Now the battery is always connected to the computer. There is no way of turning the power off. So all we've got to do is reset the computer. So how do we do this? Very simply. Take the wire to the battery, unsolder it, count up to 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and solder it back on. I haven't got my glasses, so this is going to be a bit of a mess, but I will try and do it neatly. And if I can't, I apologise. Right, it's now soldered back on. And if we turn it back over, before I put these screws in, hopefully, if I press the button, hey presto, it works. So that is how to fix a multifunction tester. Instead of sending it all the way back to Amazon, take the back off, disconnect the battery. In other words, what you're doing is giving it a restart. It doesn't restart when you switch it on and off, because the power is always connected to the processor. So all you've got to do is redo the power, reset the power, isn't a magnetic screwdriver. All my magnetic screwdrivers are meant to be magnetic. I do find that a lot easier. I must admit I'm getting old now. Put the screws back in and all of a sudden we have a working component tester. Oh, don't want to lose the screws. I always do. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I must admit I am more fingers and thumbs these days. And the only, one other thing you'll notice is my workbench. Many people just have a huge workbench, which is free. I don't. I just have to push everything back. So anyway, here's the tester. And it works. And if we put in something to test it, I don't know what I've got here. Let's find something silly. Let's find it. I don't know. What have I got in front of me? A 47 microfiber capacitor. That'll do. Shove that in. And we'll see what happens. Put it in to two different sockets, put it in, switch it on, switch on. And it tells me it's a capacitor of 44.75 microfarads. It works. There it is. Sorry, I didn't zoom in. So there it is working. Humble apologies if I didn't do it properly. So there, I hope that's of use to you. If you get one of these component testers and it goes dead, you don't need to send it back. Take the back off, disconnect the battery, reconnect the battery, and away you go, and it's working. That's the first of my little videos that I hope to be able to show you, bring you on YouTube, now that I've got some subscribers. Please do subscribe, because there's a lot more interesting stuff to come up. My next thing will be something slightly unusual. These are, my son is um, clearing out his room, and I gave him a, this card many years ago. One of the LEDs doesn't work, so what we'll do next time is take this apart, see how it works and why the LED doesn't work. Just interesting to see how they make them. Um, it'll probably be a COB, but we'll see. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again very soon.